27 online class transcripts with Dr. Carla Turner from February 13, 1995 to April 26, 1995. Carla, anyone want to jump in? Type. And I'll respond. Open. B A N D R S N T C H, what is the Jungian approach? Carla, OK. Lung's analog of the human psyche posited the existence of certain primal archetypes inherent in our, for want of a more precise term, psychic structure and when the UFO question arose, there were various explanations and theories pursued including, as is the case still today, the psychological explanation or explanations, actually, of which the Jungian approach was one application. I'll be happy to delve more into this in the class folder during the week if you'd like. Do you have more to add, Mitch? B A N D R S N T C H, recent UFO literature seems to be going in this direction. Your thought? Carla, my thought? A waste of time, until the separate, physical existence of these entities is disproven conclusively. For two reasons first, there is abundant and weighty evidence for the phenomena's reality, and also because physically real aliens, objectively speaking, I think, provides the simplest, most straightforward plausible explanation to fit the current data. That is supposed to be the scientific standard, but curiously that standard is not evenly applied when it comes to ufology. Bob, I think you want to add something, so please. Bob Bird, you referred to some findings about the soul, and I'm curious about that but perhaps since time is limited, you'd prefer to do so in the folder. Carla, yes. There's a very important topic, so much so that we could easily devote an entire evening to it. Briefly, I can say that a small but growing number of abduction reports contain details of alien comment actions that reference the human soul in a way that I think should make us very curious as to their interest here. Ed Note, for AIC members. I can't be sure, but I think Carla is referring to Whitley Strieber as he was the first one to publish abduction accounts that reference the human soul. He released that material at about the same time that Carla conducted these classes. Ain, I cannot be sure whether it's the streep of material she is referring to. John Velez. Carla, Barb. Barb Bird, I have nothing more. Carla, OK. I will go into this more in the folder if anyone would like to do so, Irene. Irene I-757, I was twice shown this and I wonder why I was shown but more importantly why they were interested and what technology they have to do this. I find this very disconcerting. Carla, me too, hopefully we can get into this discussion later in the class, but for now let's start with the scheduled discussion topics. I'll keep track of Density 4 being next and each of you as you signal so after you, Density 4, I'll have a brief opening for the topics tonight, Density. Density 4, just a brief note regarding Lazar's allegations that he read an alien book which described us humans as containers containers of what? Souls? Carla, possibly, sure, but not necessarily just that. Actually, that is a rather frequent term reported from encounters, trying to be objective and questioning, I have to be aware of at least two implications in such usage. The spiritual notion and the physical notion. For follow-up, but briefly please. Density 4, I have nothing further. Carla, OK. You know, sometimes the best discussions are entirely spontaneous and if something truly gripping should happen to come up, and we all agree, I am open to a change of plans. Nothing in stone so far as the schedule is concerned, since we can do quite a lot in the class folder. So please, all of you. Don't hesitate to let us know what you think of a particular topic or discussion. The first thing I want to look at with you tonight is the variety of encounter locales in the abduction data. There are basically two subgroups here, the beginning or initial locale for an event and in many cases a second location to which the person reports being taken for a time. Usually the initial locales are one of three, in the home, in the car, in an isolated outdoor area. The second locale groups are more varied. Aboard craft that rest on the ground, or nearly. Aboard craft that leave and return to the area of encounter. In an alien facility with only aliens present. In alien facility with both alien and human personnel. 
and in a terrestrial facility, often underground and often with humans also present. What about other locales that show up in the reports? Anyone. Terra Alta, I doubt that this happens often enough to qualify for its own nomination as a locale but I am currently investigating a case, and know of only a few others, in which various credible witnesses, including a minister, a mayor and others saw, over the period of years various crafts and anomalous lights interacting with fresh graves in a local cemetery. Period of time roughly 12 to 15 years perhaps 50 witnesses over the period of time sort of ties in with the discussion about the soul earlier, as well. Carla, okay. First, to emphasize, until we have a conclusive answer or understanding, I should think every report qualifies for examination until disproven. So by all means the more unusual reports are at least as important if not, perhaps, more so, for we often learn more from the anomaly than from the pattern. If this is a substantiated claim, then maybe we should be glad the bodies were already dead? What about any other locations? UFO BOB 51, are there many reports of abductions from big urban areas? And are craft sightings usually reported? Carla, sure, there are plenty of urban abduction reports. And craft are consistently reported as much from city sightings as any other. In the last two years, I'm aware of flaps in Dallas, Austin, and Fort Worth Waco areas just in Texas, and at least two very active areas here in Arkansas plus a number of other U.S. locations, which never got reported outside of their own areas, for instance. Anyone else? Carla, if not. I guess I'm a bit surprised that the location on other planets hasn't popped up yet, D. D777, Milwaukee, Wisconsin had a sighting. Actually, the green light was seen to go all the way from Racine to Green Bay, quite a distance, and it was reported on all the news media. Carla, yes, I've just gotten more news about that sighting recently, newspaper reports. And there was a previous group of sightings in the past 18 months or so in that area. Density. Density 4, there have been a growing number of allegations regarding abductee training centers on both Mars and the dark side of the moon. Has anyone else heard similar things? Carla, I haven't heard this, at least in such specific terms. Although I remember the alternative 3 material quite well. What, briefly, is the info? Density 4, just that. I can provide you with additional docs via email. Carla, I mean, training in what? Density 4, I don't know exactly I can check if you'd like. Carla, good. Okay, Terra Alta, I think you had a comment. Terra Alta, a multiple, actually, 1,500 times. Abductee I'm currently working with reports being taken to an interdimensional place. Carla, is there more to the description of this place? Terra Alta, yes. Much too much detail for here. Later via email or in the quad, okay? Carla, okay. On with the schedule. In the earlier days of encounter reports, there were several cases claiming travel to other cosmic bodies, from the moon to the known planets, usually and then in the next 20 or so years, the reports grew to include planets not identified by the aliens the most common of which is the desert or red, barren planet yet it has not, to my knowledge ever been identified as Mars. More on all the location reports will be discussed in the folder. I also want to quickly, as we're running out of time, go through a few other lists specifically so we can delve into them during the week. The next topic, alien teaching and training sessions. Missing time. Ed note, there is a missing piece of the class here. That's what was referred to at the opening of this class. Sorry. John Velez. Carla, about other types of teaching training session reports you've learned of. Irene. Irene I-757, I just got punted and don't know exactly what you said but I was taken to a place I called the arena several times, it appeared like some kind of horse training center on top and had an underground facility underneath. The dirt in the arena was very red, the facility had many levels and rooms and included the military. Carla. This is consistent with probably three or four other reports in my research except for the specific ground color in all cases and the arena description but the term corral has been used in a similar report. Terra Alta, but first, for Irene, 
We will certainly go more into the underground topic, pardon the pun, in our folder. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Please with your thoughts, Irene. Irene I-757, I very much want to know about the others. This is very uncomfortable for me tonight. Irene I-757, I'm finished, it's just that the last thing one wants to hear when relaying this kind of experience. I have used the term rodeo many times in referring to this place. Carla, what exactly is causing your discomfort with this? Is it disturbing of true, you mean? Let me interrupt Dane, please we haven't gotten to a very important part of this class discussion which would be useful here, the topic of virtual reality. I hope that when we do discuss this, you may be somewhat relieved to consider that a great deal of what we see and experience may indeed be illusory to a large degree. That is one thing I try to remember always, both with my own experiences and with the reports of others who share theirs with me. Do you want to now, Irene? Irene I-757, I'm just very upset by the concept of having been trained. To do what, when, what part of me has been tampered with? Carla, yes, I fully agree. It must be the primary worry of every abductee, once the awareness of the agenda begins to sink in, even though we know so little of it. This does bring us back to the next topic I want to cover for our week's discussion, alien law and metaphysics. Part of the abduction data includes such reports. In the category of law I include info about the alien's home planet or system, with all its many varieties. Also included are the various explanations of the alien's purposes which are imparted to abductees, as well as contactees, of course. These typically are 1. Here to help their own species. 2. Here to help human species. 3. Here to assist in some spiritual scenario. 4. Here to warn us of future destruction but to do nothing to prevent it. Any others? Carla, yes, Irene. Irene I-757, maybe they are here for purely research purposes. I don't believe that but it is a possibility. Carla, yes, and it is one the aliens have proffered in several cases. Of course, the possibilities of combined motivations is in the list too, D. D-777, in the UFO group I belong to, we have 30 people now and six of us have been programmed with compulsions to set up communities in various parts of the country. Each one of us has the compulsion to go to a different part of the country. Each one is intense in this purpose and is working hard on the plans for the future. Carla, right. The Get Ready program that we too, among many others, have gone through which is why we are here in the woods, certain woods with certain requirements. Is any of this familiar to you? I've now learned of probably 30 people who were compelled to move just to the Ozarks in the past 3-4 years, from all over the country without a real understanding of their sense of urgency and necessity to do so. Or have you and your acquaintances had a substantially different experience? After you answer, though, I want Irene to have another chance, and then we have to stop for the night, as we're past time now, D. D777 one of our group is going to the Ozarks. She went down last month to look for land. Carla, there's plenty of it, rather affordable, but believe me, unless you're bringing a hefty bank account, you'll have trouble supporting yourself there, Irene. Irene I-757, we live in a barn and a tea pie in the woods behind Oregon City, Oregon. We have been very actively pursuing an independent lifestyle for years. This creeps me out though. I want to know that this was a good idea. My idea. Carla, I can share my own rationalization for our actions, if you'd like. Irene I-757, yes. Carla, we felt that yes, we realized we could be under external compulsion to make this move for reasons we wouldn't like if we knew them, but we also insisted that our actions here, whatever the coming situation, would be positive and do no harm, no matter what the other agenda might include and we vowed to do only the things that were truly good for us and enjoyable as well. Here we are quite happy and active, with wonderful friends and neighbors, and the whole thing unfolded as if by plan, to be sure. But I believe, and it's just belief, I know, that humans and aliens are not the only two groups in this universe, 
or at least that there are more than just those who abduct. I hope that's helpful. Irina 757, yes, thanks. Carla, let's close for tonight, though, and we'll have a really intense week of discussion coming up, I hope. Any final remarks? Carla, okay, density. Density 4, briefly, you mentioned agendas a few times off the record, what is your take on the grey agenda? Carla, honestly, I don't think there is a grey agenda, because the data leads me to believe that the greys are not what I'd call a life and individual but are probably manufactured tools for the real entities. Density 4, OK so the controllers then? Carla, oh, the real question. I don't have a strong hypothesis, truly but I'd be glad to discuss the possibilities, which is all I have at present, anyone else? Carla, OK, let's pack it up for the night, and I'll finish the topics in the folder tomorrow. Thank you all for being here, and thanks especially to those who contributed tonight. Bye for now. AIC would like to thank Michael Lindeman and CNI News for their generous contribution of the following. Carla, Tony, please. Tony Tree, has anyone noticed a change in any abductees' attitudes toward their abductors? Carla, yes, I certainly have. What about the rest of you? Carla, yes, D. D777, in the group I belong to, I see lots of anger where there used to be fear. Isknamik L, I think such a change, toward generally more positive, is one of the most puzzling things happening in abduction research today. Carla, is there more, Michael, or is that a? Isknamik L, sorry. Carla, is it really puzzling? Or could it be what we might expect? Given the widespread influx of info on the subject, as well as the opportunity for so many abductees to begin to investigate, or at least to ponder more openly on their experiences? Irene, please. Carla, oops, I meant Tony. Tony Tree, I totally agree. Some now think it is a wonderful experience as before it was a nightmare. Carla, and D, please. D777, Carla. You have a standing invitation from the leader of my group to attend any one of our meetings and hear the pain and anger in the voices of real abductees. Carla, thanks, D. I do hear much of the emotional response from many abductees and that's one of the main reasons I have pursued this research. My husband and I felt very alone, sometimes frightened, often angry when we had to deal with our experiences in a vacuum and we vowed to do our best to help other people avoid such isolation and confusion if we ever could find a way to do so. Thus, we're in this work now. But as was pointed out earlier, many abductees tend to see their emotional and intellectual responses change as their knowledge grows and their experiences evolve, occasionally. Irene, you've got a comment? Irene I-757 my feeling is they are real abductees also, but have perhaps fallen to a questionable agenda. Carla, let's back up a bit. What was the original meaning of real abductee in your statement, D? D777, I belong to a UFO therapy group where every member is an abductee. Carla, okay, but can you be more specific, do you know people you'd call unreal abductees? D777, some just say they had a dream. Others have conscious abductions. Some have had to watch their children be abducted while they were paralyzed. Carla, yes, I see what you mean but it's true that many real abductees cannot handle, as yet, facing the reality of their experiences and prefer to use terms like dream rather than recognizing what is actually occurring, because if they recognized the events as real they would be forced to do something different. Nazis, do you have a comment? Nazis, I don't understand why some people's experiences are so negative, and others so positive if challenging. It's always challenging. Carla, good question but the data I've compiled and compared with other researchers' findings seem consistent on this that the majority of abductees have, in the course of time, both positive feeling and negative feeling experiences, often at the hands of the same entities so that it's really rather rare for one person's total experiences to seem all traumatic or all wonderful. I think we'd better start with the formal class now and to do that, 
I first want to know if there are questions or comments about last week's material. Irene, what about you? Irene I-757, I have had to come at this from a recovery mode in that I look at the actions to define what is going on rather than my feelings about what is going on, as I said in my homework the more I look at this from a daylight, questioning as it were, the worse it looks. Carla, Tony, what about you? Tony Tree, just one comment before we begin class. Is it possible that this wide variety of emotions is exactly what the aliens want to solicit? Carla, oh, yes, I think that's a big possibility. And it's one of the theories that have been advanced to explain some of the more anomalous events reported by abductees. As I hope we'll find here, many events do not have any clear-cut purpose, at least from our POV, and often they seem to be strictly to elicit certain emotional responses. Bob, a comment before we go to the lecture? Bob Bird, Carla. I'd still like to see you go into your findings on the soul in the folders unless I've missed it somehow. Carla, OK, but it will take me a little more time to formulate all my thoughts on the data and I'll probably save the in-depth discussion for a subsequent class. But I'd be glad to chat about this more informally in our folder this week. If AOL lets me stay online long enough. Irene I-757, lol. Carla, when we finished with last week's session, I had not covered all the topics I planned, and when I added them to the folder, I may have mixed up some topics from last class with topics I wanted to present tonight. So please forgive any overlap as I go on now. This class topic is alien law and metaphysics. I've defined law as information delivered by the aliens, of whatever variety, to abductees but which cannot be externally verified. To begin, Let's look at the typical statements by aliens about their home or origin. In the earliest days of reported contact, does anyone recall where the aliens usually said they came from? Anyone? Carla, yes, Tony. Tony Tree, Venus. Carla, right, among others. What else? Texas, 90829, Jupiter. Carla, okay, another hotspot from the 50s. Anyone else recall an alien home planet? Irene. Irene I-757, Native American law says the moon. Carla, yes, and so did some of the earlier ETs. Yes. Michael. Iskna Michael, Zeta Ridiculi. Carla, nope, sorry. Anyone else? Carla, okay, Tony. Tony Tree, Barney and Betty Hill's aliens come from Zeta. Carla, well, perhaps but the aliens never said that. Where, in fact, did the Zeta connection begin? Anyone? Carla, yes, Irene. Irene I-757, from the woman who put together the star map from the hill's description. Iskna Michael, right. Carla, bingo. And after that, Marjorie Fish, for those who want to look into this, then we bend to get much later reports that aliens were implying an origin from Zeta Ridiculi. Yes, Michael? Iskna Michael, nothing to add. It's been said. Carla, okay, go ahead, Irene. Irene I-757, roughly how many abductees are given locational info? I never have been. Carla, neither have I, to be honest and it is rather rare to get reports of locations just as it is rather rare to get any info from the abducting aliens. My point in starting with the early cases is to show that the first contacts with entities almost exclusively involved a home planet within our solar system, but later this changed dramatically and we bend to get reports of places that we had no possibility of checking out. Any thoughts about this change? Carla, yes, Charlie. Mrs. Were those 50s contacts genuine? Carla, I have no reason to doubt the stories of many of the early contact cases. But of course I wasn't around to personally interview them. However, from the subsequent research I would bet that these people really did have experiences of some sort. But why do you think the home planet info might change as it did? Carla, Irene. Irene I-757, either the credibility of the witnesses is questionable, or more likely and more sinister as we were able to verify the location, we were given disinformation. Carla, 
I have wondered about that too, as we started to explore our solar system. Yes, Charlie. Nazis, Venus was an obvious choice, but I very much doubt that people like Adamski were for real. Carla, there are still some very firm supporters of his accounts, however and I would more likely question the alien statements than the contactees, at least until there were reasons to think otherwise. Wayne. Texas, 90829, perhaps as we expanded our knowledge of space they changed their story. Carla, could well be. Tony. Tony Tree, has anyone ever heard of any abductees saying that the aliens say they come from our future? Carla, I'm not familiar with any reports of this statement from aliens. What about others? Irina 757, nope. Iskna Michael, it seems to me odd that although popular literature was full of men from Mars most of the early contactees did not mention Mars as a planet of origin. I'd also add that Native Americans often said they derived from beings who came from the Pleiades, yikes, spelling. Carla, yes, there are some wonderful accounts of Native American lore about the sky people. Nazis. Nazis, human psychology is a reason to think otherwise about people's contact statements. People will be firm in the support of anything that excites them. Carla, I think I understand what you're referring to but as an abductee who has had almost everything questioned at one time or another and know how frustrating it is not to be able to supply hard evidence, perhaps I'm more open to the accounts as being essentially honest although that does not mean I accept the accounts as accurate, which is quite a different matter. To continue with the topic, let's look at the aliens' accounts of their agenda. The mainstream perception of the purpose for the alien presence includes very few possibilities the first is that they are here to harvest genetic material to upgrade their degenerate species, the second is that they are here to salvage, at least part of, the human species which is not going to survive indefinitely. A third explanation is that they are performing strictly scientific studies. A fourth is that they are here on a spiritual mission. And finally we get reports that they are here either to observe or to intervene in a coming time of global catastrophe. What about any other explanations with which you are familiar? Nazis, that's most of them. Carla, yes, Wayne. Texas, 90829, how about the possibility of Earth being part of an economic trade route? Carla, I think we should consider that possibility but do we have any reports in which the aliens made such a statement? Let me know if any of you are familiar with such reports and for now, exile, please. Nazis, one offered to buy Caliph. From me for $27. Exile, we are on a verge of an psych evolution and we are becoming aware and maybe calling them. Carla, a possible theory. But we are trying at first at least to look at alien law, the things they say to us. Yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, there were quite a few reports, some years ago, that UFOs seem to be harvesting water. Carla, right. And we still don't have a clue about their reasons. Yes, Irene. Irene 757, is it even possible for us to come up with an agenda without going way outside current thinking? Carla, I hope so. But that's not the purpose here. We want to examine what they say which brings me to another bit of alien law, which is the material relating to religious ideas. For instance, it is fairly common to get reports of events in which the aliens stress teachings of the separation of body and soul. They typically use the term container to refer to the body and they emphasize the supremacy of the soul over the body in these cases. Yet in a number of situations where the abductees have been able to communicate with the aliens we get contradictory statements from them about their recognition of a god or some aliens have shown a recognizably Christian slant to their statements, while in other cases, the aliens do not recognize the concept of God as we use it here. Yes, Wayne Texas, 90829, which aliens talk about the soul, if known. Carla, if you mean, which physical type? comments have been reported coming from Grace and from more human-looking entities. Also there are a handful of reports involving insectoids. D. D777, the aliens speak of reincarnation. In that they put souls right back into another body when the body dies. Carla, reincarnation or recycling? Nazis, the aliens put them in? 
Carla, I have two cases in which women, as young children, were shown a huge metallic sphere in space and were told that it was the place where souls were basically recycled. In one case the girl said she knew that if she went into that sphere, she would not come out alive. Yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, I've heard reports that some aliens claim to have made Jesus, or Jesus was an alien. Do you know of any abductee who has actually heard that claim? Carla, heck, yes. And even more, there are plenty of cases in which Jesus himself shows up for a cameo appearance but I think it's strange that in all these cases, the Jesus figure never looks Jewish, but rather appears as blonde and blue-eyed. I have a good report on these lines in Taken, BTW. Irene. Irene I757, I don't know if this is related by my two earliest memories were of a vision of Christ St. Michael. Iskna Michael, well, Jesus doesn't look very Jewish in most Christian depictions either. Carla, wait. Irene I757, and of a grey at the foot of my bed. I also saw the spear you were talking about in a rebirthing. Carla, I think I missed calling on Tony first, and then Charlie, so let's back up to Tony, please. Tony Tree, I have come across the term the one in many alien accounts, Fowler among others, I wonder is this God? Irene I-757, several years ago in which I remembered my conception. This is very puzzling to me. Mrs. So, is this Jesus reality or apparition or subjective perceptual distortion? Carla, could be, Tony, as in some cases the aliens use the term God but in other cases they seem to simply refer to a vague concept. Charlie, you're next, please. Carla, I would think that when we look at a number of parts of alien law, we should wonder if the aliens aren't taking ideas and concepts from the minds of their subjects and then playing those back for them, as it were. We saw this, possibly, in their switch from home planets in our neighborhood to places too far away to be observed. And until we get some specific reports from predominantly non-Christian cultures, we don't know if Jesus is a universal type for them, or if in India, say, they bring in Krishna. Go ahead, Jim. Iskne Akkad, something that ties together a few of the themes you've mentioned is the idea that Armageddon, our own image, and a religious image, is coming, and they are going to pick the chosen people. Have you heard these types of reports? Carla, not too often, but in one case, Pat and Taken, the aliens told her they were angels, but not as you were taught and they also implied that they were cloning bodies to have ready for the resurrection of course, in other reports, the cloning explanation has been far different. I can't believe that we're already running out of time, just when things are getting good, but it's about time to shut down for tonight and hopefully continue in our folder. Charlie, you can have the next comment, and then Michael. Iskna Michael, Carla, it's your choice, but you can continue at least another 15 minutes. Carla, I wish I could, but I need to keep to the schedule tonight. Charlie. Mrs. Dinner awaits. Carla, we should pursue our own ideas about the alien comments during the week, please and I will check into the folder daily and respond. I hope the rest of you will also take advantage of our folder and toss in your ideas too. Some of you are apparently reluctant to dive in but please know that you will not be ridiculed or face any derision for your comments. Let's make this a very productive week in the folder, Ock. Mrs. Sounds good. Carla, hi, folks. Glad you're here tonight. D777 wouldn't miss it. Thanks. Carla, by the way, D, I was just given the name of a person who may be a blind abductee, but I haven't made any contact yet. Bar Bird, Carla, looking forward to meeting you at the Ozark Conference in April. D777, I wish you luck. That could be an important breakthrough. Good luck. Carla, so you're coming? Great. It will be a good opportunity to meet a lot of folks from all over the country, and the speakers usually have plenty of up-to-date info. D777, Carla my friend Bonnie will be at the Ozark Conference. Would you like to meet her? Carla, sure, D, I'll be speaking and also at one of the vendor areas, so tell her to stop by and introduce herself. Hello, Wayne Texas, 
90829, Hello, Dr. Turner. D777, I will do that Carla. She'll appreciate it so much. Carla, is anyone else planning to attend the Ozark Conference, by the way? D777, I'm certain you'll have a lot of Wisconsin and Illinois people we know from here. Carla, guess not. Hi, Tony and Bob. Until we start the main discussion, does anyone have preliminary comments or questions? Tara Alter, hi. It's good to be back. D777, I woke up with a triangle itchy spots on my hand this week. It swelled up really big. Don't know if that's significant. Carla, was there any other unusual activity during the night? D777, just my usual strange dreams. Carla, anyone else have comments? Texas, 90829, I'm still looking for the G-Men abducting implant info for you Dr. Turner. Carla, thanks, Wayne, you can email short items and send a folder of anything lengthier. One quick question before class begins. I haven't asked for anyone to discuss their own alien encounters although some of you have been very open about your experiences and I expect that all members of this group will respect the confidentiality of anything personal which is shared in the course of our discussions. Agreed? D777, agreed. Carla, yes, Irene? Texas, 90829, agreed. Tara Alter, yup. Irene I757, there was just an abductee Rice Krispies commercial on. Carla, yes, I was told about it but haven't seen it yet. I'm still blown away by the one for stove top stuffing. Hope you've all seen it. Time for one last freebie before I start the discussion. Anyone? Carla, yes, Jim? Iskne Akkad, is it awfully conspiratorial to think that all these advertisers are doing this as concert? Carla, well, it's certainly true that some of the major corporate interests have promoted the UFO and alien motifs in widespread advertising, and they don't spend their money heedlessly, do you think? Anyone have a response to this? Density 4, stepping up the drip feed campaign you mean? Carla, the public preparation agenda, Devin? Density 4, yup. Yeah. Carla, is that conspiratorial thinking? Anyone? Carla, yes. Irene. Irene I-757, in my college radical days I learned just how far the GOVT and big business are capable of going to promote whatever it is they please, the stories of GM and Standard Oil buying out all of the trolleys for example the list is endless, why should this be any different? Carla, we'd want to look at the motives of big business and its relation to this phenomenon in more detail, if we want to get a bigger view which is why I've started a mini-topic folder operative in April, on the connections between corporate interests and the UFO alien scenario. So if anyone is interested, that's where to share your ideas. Yes, D? D777, my local UFO group has been approached by a film crew from out east to interview people in our group, not just because of the UFO connection but because we have members of many colors and they want to show an ethnicity for a CNN coverage program. Carla, interesting. Let us know what happens and when it will be broadcast, please. For now, let's get started with our final set of topics for the course, which are non-reproductive physical procedures, implants, and virtual reality capabilities. We're familiar with the genetics procedures and fetal extractions, but there are a number of other physical procedures regularly reported by abductees. What, for instance, can you recall? Carla, yes, D? D777, I've had several surgeries on my head, in the back. Carla, right, this is a more common report than the general literature reflects and many abductees describe it in almost identical terms saying, they opened my head and removed my brain. Yet we don't find any scars from these procedures afterwards. What other procedures are there? Carla, yes, Barb. Barb Bird, I've heard of abductees receiving healings of various sorts. Carla, okay, this is part of the data and some of the reports are very impressive when it comes to medical verification but they aren't statistically a significant part of the reported procedures. Yes, Mitch. Carla, 
Mitch just got punted, so go ahead, Irene. Irene I-757, scoop marks, needles in the abdomen we have both had unusual scars. Carla, yes, and some of these marks may be explained as part of the genetics work, as with the needle intrusions into the navel and over the ovaries, and the scoop marks may be samples used for genetics work too. Mitch, you had a comment? B-A-N-D-R-S-N-T-C-H, never mind I got thrown out. Carla, go ahead if you'd like. All right, Terra Alta, I think you are next. Terra Alta, an abductee I'm working with, recalls 1500 abductions, reports very little surgical intrusion, but a massive amount of tuning on his system for the purpose of being a conduit for energy certainly not a statistical category, but an interesting report nonetheless. B-A-N-D-R-S-N-T-C-H, there are reports of implants to increase the abductee's level of awareness. Carla, both interesting aspects. I'll respond to you first, Mitch, because we will be discussing the implants separately a bit later tonight and this should be part of that. As for the physical tuning of abductees, yes, these reports are tantalizing because if something physical is indeed being altered, there should be some way to test and analyze body tissues and functions to confirm this but I don't, so far, know of any group funding such a study. Yes, Irene? Irene I-757, when I was in Rachel Nevada visiting Glenn Campbell he said there were physical tests that are being developed to prove the existence of UFO sites and we talked about the possibility of testing abductees in the same sort of way. I know I have physical after effects such as a metallic taste in my mouth and a very hung over feeling these things should be somehow measurable. I have offered over the net to make myself available for this kind of testing but have had no takers. Nazis, sorry I'm late, teach, had to help Ma burn the pine needles. Carla, I remember reading that. Of course, funding is scarce, and the real research carried out is under R&D auspices, for the most part and won't be made available to the public so it's unlikely that any known group of abductees will be openly tested. Hi, Nazis, we are looking at non-reproductive physical procedures reported as part of abduction events. Besides the brain procedures, there are also frequent reports of the body being scanned by various equipment. Do you know of such instruments in the reports? Yes, D. D777, my friend Bonnie has had implants put on over the corneas of her eyes which cause her to see energies in the next dimensions all the time. Carla, has any doctor examined her eyes and confirmed this? D777, yes. She went to her ophthalmologist because she can't see clearly in the physical now. Carla. Has the doctor confirmed the presence of artificial implant materials on her eyes? D777, the doctor was shocked to see her eyes, and asked her if she had had her eyes implanted. Carla, yes, Tony? Tony Tree, there's a man at MIT that specializes in implants I think his name is Pritchard. Mrs. Pritchard? Carla, right, and perhaps Michael could find out if there have been any recent reports on implant analyses. Another physical procedure is the insertion of wires or tubes into the abductee's wrist, knees, feet, and several other locations not directly related to reproduction. And also, perhaps the most classic procedure reported, the taking of samples of skin, hair, and fingernails. Yes, D. D777, I hate to be redundant, but Bonnie and I both had something with wires inserted between the ribs on the right side on the same day a couple of weeks ago. Carla, I'm not surprised by such reports anymore, D, they are so frequent, and yet we still don't know what purpose they serve. People often say that some liquid is either injected or removed by the tubes, but explanations are hardly ever given. A similar reported procedure is the forced ingestion of a substance or liquid which has various descriptions. The liquid is typically associated with a subsequent alteration of some sort in the abductee. Yes, D. D777, I was injected with some chemical about eight years ago to test my immune system which caused my health to downslide a great deal. They come back every so often to check how my immune system is healing itself. Carla, two things in response, first, yes, when the aliens do give an explanation, 
it often has something to do with our immune system, or with changing some frequency or vibration in our bodies, but as of yet we have not externally confirmed that this is indeed the real nature of their procedures, as we cannot objectively monitor the events. Second, from your statement I assume that you've had some health problems in the course of your alien experiences, and I would point out that to be honest, especially for women, these events seem to lead to health problems. Typically, these are gynecological, and some of them are unexplained. Yes, Charlie? Mrs. I was zapped with a blue-colored ray in the right upper chest, to correct a problem there, they said. But it is difficult to correlate this sort of thing with regular, Western medicine, or confirm it. Carla, were you aware of a problem in that area before this event? Mrs. Yes, a very long-term, that is, chronic problem. Carla, how is the problem now? Mrs. It seems to have rebalanced itself. Carla, excellent. Perhaps this is one that should go in the healing category. Looking at these various procedures, can you reasonably explain them in terms of any of the traditional abduction theories? Anyone? Carla, yes, Devon. Density 4, just to guess keep them containers in tip-top shape so they can keep mining them for sperm, over, etc. Whatever or to make it appear that they are friendly and well-intentioned. Carla, okay, but it's just not the case that all abductees have good health, as I was saying so that isn't a widespread concern. However, given your premise of mining, could it be that the gynecological problems could stem from repeated mining forays into the women's reproductive areas? Any responses? Carla, yes, Devon. Density 4, as an aside, I have never heard of the aliens cleansing their ubiquitous anal probes between use on various folks. Mrs. Oh my. Density 4, as we would expect a dentist to clean his instruments or a gynecologist, surgeon, etc. Carla, yes, and this concern has been voiced by many abductees as has a concern about possible disease transmission from the forced sexual encounters some of them go through. Yes, Jim. Irina 757, EEWWW. Isknia Cad, if they're creating a master race of chosen people after humans destroy the planet, all of this would make sense as general physical research, wouldn't it? The more they know the better, so to speak. Carla, perhaps, but they've been doing this research for a long, long time and must be pretty dense not to have learned enough by now. D. Can your comment wait long enough for me to get to the next topic? Mrs. Which suggests it's not research. Carla, thanks. Our time is running out quickly, and I want to at least touch on the other two topics, starting with the implants. Typical reports tell of small devices inserted into different parts of the abductee's body such as the nose, ear, neck, spine, and eye socket but isolated instances have included other areas too. Sometimes these devices actually appear on X-rays and MRI scans, but usually the recalled implant does not show up when the area is rescanned. Some possible implants have been recovered, usually accidentally, and in cases where they have been analyzed, the materials typically are quite terrestrial, but sometimes the combinations of elements are unusual. Yes, Irene? Irene I-757, are there really implants in someone's possession? One hears rumors of what terrestrial nature are they. Carla, there are alleged implants, which is the best I can say objects that are not identifiable in usual terms, but with terrestrial elements. Still, none that I know of has been convincingly shown to be of non-human manufacture nor, however, has a terrestrial source been conclusively identified, so the question of authenticity is still up in the air. To continue about the implants. There are several explanations of their functions offered both by the aliens and by the abductees usually, they say, based on their intuitive sense of the objects. What functions are you already familiar with, from the available literature? Carla, yes, Irene. Irene I-757, tracking. One time I woke up with the feeling that I had been hit in the face with a hammer and a couple of minutes later something flew over really low and fast. Carla. Why do you associate that experience with an implant and with tracking? Irene I-757, 
because the pain was very localized in the area that always creaks after an experience this same area was so infected after a sighting I had in 1967 that I was almost hospitalized for it. I guess actually though my reaction is strictly emotional. Carla, hello, Michael and Jim. Iskna Michael, greetings, Carla. You found the place, I see. 20, with five auditors, and yes, I sent out two reminders in fact. Ah, Carla, you have 20 sign-ups, pretty good. And we expect a few more to sign up this week. Carla, Michael, will you be doing an intro tonight? Carla, welcome, everyone. Iskna Michael, Carla, I can if you wish. I actually plan to sit quietly, if possible, and just observe. What would you like? Carla, all right with me. Have you read the quotation in the folder? Iskna Michael, I do think we can wait another minute or two. Thanks to everyone for arriving on time. New soul, Michael, have you ever been able to sit quietly? Iskna Michael, Linda, not very well. But when I'm real tired it's easier. New soul, glad you're here. I'll be right back. Carla, I wish you could all attend the Ozark UFO conference, by the way. Iskna Michael, Carla, maybe you should restate the quote, if it's not too long. Carla, Michael, the quote is a full page, so I don't think it's worth taking that much time but of course I can relay the gist of it, at the beginning, and it will stay in the folder, okay? Iskna Michael, okay. Carla, okay, let's go ahead with the present crew. First, welcome to you all and thanks for your interest in what I feel is an extremely provocative idea, the theory that our species is witnessing a substantial change of some sort. I posted a lengthy quote from John White's book, The Meeting of Science and Spirit, concerning some thoughts about this from several recognized enlightened humans in the recent past. Is there anyone here who hasn't had a chance to read that yet? Carla, can I take that to mean that you've all read the folder, then? New soul. I just read it quickly. Carla, anyone else? For Kent, Illumination, right? Mosley 288, have read it. Carla, right. By the way, for those of you who are new to the online class session format we employ certain conventions to make the conversation flow more smoothly. When you wish to make a comment or ask a question, you can type an exclamation mark for comment and a question mark for a question then please give me a chance to call on you I'll do my best to keep requests in order. The second convention is to add a, for go ahead, when you're finished with your comments. If you must send your message before you've completed it, add three dots. And we'll know you have more to say. Okay, any questions about this procedure? Many of you are familiar to me from my first course here, and it's nice to see you Ain. Before we launch into a discussion of White's quote, I should tell you about the scope of this course and give you a quick outline for the remaining sessions. As the course prospectus noted, this pen with two questions specific to the abduction phenomenon, namely 1. Why are abductees typically unaware of ongoing experiences until some later point in their lives when the repressed memories are awakened? 2. If abduction activity has been a long-term situation on Earth, why is it that our generation and society seems to be the first one to wake up, in massive numbers comparatively to activities that have been occurring for ages? Any questions about this starting point? Carla, yes, D. D777, some abductions seem to be out-of-body experiences or what seem to be dreams, and people just aren't aware that these can be real experiences. Carla, exactly. Until, that is, they go through a particular experience and suddenly many more memories surface. This is the pattern reported by any number of researchers into abduction accounts, and I find it to be generally true. Yes, Red. Redshift 9, what is the evidence that abductions have been a long-term situation? Carla, good question. The evidence rests upon interpretations of old accounts myths, legends, and religious writings mainly as well as interpretations of certain archaeological findings. Such authorities as Vali and Sitchin, for instance, have discussed this possibility. Carla, back to you, D. 
In my last course I discussed some reasons for the hidden memories from abductions, so I won't get back into that point for now. Yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, it may be we are not the first generation as you say in the sense that many ancient cultures took contact with the gods for granted at some level. We may be in a recurrent pattern that seems very out of sync with our scientific paradigm, that pattern being a time of mythic breakthrough that deconstructs and reconstructs our belief systems. Kala, yes, this may indeed be our situation yet the fact that we can still seriously discuss a number of possible situations seems to indicate that we haven't generally recognized the situation yet, I would think. There may indeed have been ancient contacts with the entities we know today from abduction accounts. It may also be the case that in, both the ancient and the current contacts, the entities have not were not honest with the humans who knew them. Carla, yes, Linda. New soul, why do you say that? Carla, because at least in current reports, there is strong evidence of illusions and deceptions and verifiably false and unverifiable information coming from the abductors and if they are the same group as the ancients gods then the possibility must remain for the older group too. Yes, Kent. For Kent, I'm notorious for asking about the white light experience. I believe that the illuminating experience is more than philosophical. There really is a white light that flares in the head. It starts with a chilling in the spine which travels upward to become a flare in the inner eye with added sensory effects such as the ability to see through closed eyelids, even a synesthesia sight sensation on other skin surfaces. Is there a neurological theory that would account for such experience? Carla, let's get a neurologist in here, somebody. For Kent, macros. Carla, I recognize some of your description from accounts of Kundalini experiences, BTW, but for now, let's try to stay with the specifics of this course, Ark. We don't know if abductions are an ancient practice but it's part of the possible theories that impinge upon the idea of our current transformative process. Bob. Mosley 288, rather than dishonesty could it just be not making an explanation to an ant? Carla, yep, could be just that. New soul, that's what I think too Bob. Carla, but the amazing and bewildering variety of experiences that are part of the abduction scenario simply defy logical explanations many times and point to a much deeper involvement with us humans than we have with even our typical lab animals. Yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, it's interesting that high cultures like the ancient Greeks, who had a very developed sense of beauty, goodness and justice, nonetheless spoke of their gods as being capricious, jealous, violent of taking sides, of warring amongst themselves, and also of coming down to have their way with the fair damsels of the land, etc. One would think the Greeks could imagine nicer gods than that, if it were a matter of imagination. Kala, true. And those who try to explain this situation, without resorting to an extraterrestrial one usually discuss it in terms of the development of the human psyche and specifically of consciousness. For those of you who are interested in this approach, Please check the reading list in the folder, BTW. D. D777, I think that in many cases, people thought they were seeing angels perhaps, or demons or even ghosts, and in medieval times, people were put in chains in dungeons screaming because they thought they had lost their minds and even to this day, aliens and UFOs are a taboo subject except perhaps one on one. Even in my own family, I can't discuss the subject openly. Carla, yes, you may be right about how we have misinterpreted or misnamed this phenomenon in the past, and perhaps even today, let me quickly give you a brief outline for the classes coming up. In the second session, we'll focus on the spiritual aspects of the hypothesized transformation or mutation or evolutionary leap that many of us sense is occurring. In the third session, the focus will be upon the biological aspects and the final class will discuss the intellectual mental aspects as well as putting the various discussion threads together in some reasonable manner. My starting theory or question concerns the leap of our species from a bicameral mode to a tricameral mode of some sort, and I'd like to define my use of these terms briefly. Although the term bicameral has been used specifically to refer to the human psyche before the advent of consciousness as we know it today, as in Julian Jaynes' book, it has also been used in other ways, 
pointing to a bifurcation in the human psyche conscious and unconscious is one such bicameralism. Mind and brain is another. In Greek terms it was expressed as psyche and soma and the difference was much as we make between brain and mind today. My use of bicameral refers to the conscious-subconscious duality and my reference to tricameralism concerns the emergence of a new level of conscious perception and action. Any questions on these terms, before we go to the quote? Please don't be shy. Carla, yes, Bob. Mosley 288, do you have a thought about what this third level is? Carla, I have thoughts, yes, and perhaps they're wishful to a degree and I intend to share them as we progress, but of course I'm more interested in the thoughts of our class participants. For those of you who read the quote from White, do you have any beginning comments about the ideas expressed by such great visionaries as Richard Buck, or Sri Aurobindo? Yes, Linda. New soul, maybe you're about to get to this, but what kinds of new reports are you getting from abductees which indicate a kind of a more positive consciousness shift? It seems the white quote and many other things I've read support this idea of a shift to a higher, or tricameral, whatever new way that's my personal feeling too. But it seems if aliens are involved in this, that abductees would have first knowledge. Carla, the knowledge that abductees bring away from their encounters is very limited, first off, and comes from alien-controlled events on top of that, so knowledge is not always what we get. There are a few things in the reports that could be evidence of a shift, including of course the accounts from contactees who generally report positive seeming events and among abductees I feel that reports of events in which the abductees were able to break loose from control are indications of something changing with them as well as events in which the abductees are able to see through illusionary scenarios as has happened on a number of occasions in the past couple of years. Yes, Bob. Mosley 288 I read Buck's Cosmic Consciousness years ago, and I thought his enlightenment was strictly of a spiritual awakening thing while abductions are physical, biological. Carla, true. Within the body of possible explanations for the abduction scenario, however are explanations that don't accept the physical reality of the events which seem so real to abductees, and also some explanation for even the real aliens say that they are working on us in an effort to assist our spiritual transformation into some new form of existence, so either way we have to consider the question of a spiritual component in all this. Now, back once more to the quote. How do you feel about White's remark that the great visionaries after all the native things our recent history has produced, seem like foolish dreamers, when they talk about the imminent emergence of the supermind, or cosmic consciousness just around the corner for humanity. Carla, yes, Bob. Mosley 288, I think all those bad things, wars, depressions, etc., make a need for dreamers more than ever. Carla, you may be right, but that is a sad statement, isn't it? Go ahead, Michael. Iskna Michael, if we are in a time of mythic breakthrough as I mentioned earlier, then it is equally likely that the way things are becomes more rigid, more self-defensive and in a real sense more crazy in other words, a heightening of the opposites before the genuine breakthrough. Carla, well, we're certainly seeing a global polarization that is frightening, I'd agree. Yes, your point about the descent into a chaotic state, which typically precedes any reorganization, is a good one. The status quo is held onto even more tightly and extremely when it is threatened. This brings up, BTW, a point for later discussion about the need for a species to develop new coping mechanisms during stressful times that threaten its continued existence. Yes, Linda. New soul, without foolish dreamers positive, forward, upwardly consciousness raising growth would not be possible. And while thinkers like White may be cutting edge, or perhaps even a bit too early there are many more now who are being widely accepted that is celeste in prophecy, etc. It's like because of the chaos and lack of belief on the rigid ways we've had, people are searching and perhaps ready to make the consciousness leap because of the bad stuff. Carla, yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, this too is not a new thing. In the Bavid Gita there's a line that says, in effect, spoken by God, by the way, that, whenever things get really terrible, that's when I make myself in the image of humankind and come forth in, to set things right. Carla, excellent. And though he never made any claims to divinity, 
Buckminster Fuller also said that while humanity has the potential to go forward peacefully, its history shows that it must be propelled by direst circumstances to go forward, kicking and screaming the whole way. Lest I leave Mr. White hanging, let me now finish the quotation for you. Then I'll have an assignment for the time between sessions. The rest of White's quote is this, perhaps, but only if evidence which supports and advances their view is lacking. Is there nothing but darkness in this world, nothing but blind selfish instincts, nothing but greed and aggression which seek to reduce life to the lowest level of brutality, masked only by a thin veneer of civilized behavior? Is existence what novelist Joseph Contrad described? As the horror, the horror? I say there is something else. So please add this to the quote in the folder and before next week, I'd ask each of you to make a considered reply to the quote and post it in the folder. There will also be a new set of quotes for the basis of next class discussion. Our time is up for tonight, but if there are any pressing comments thus far, let's briefly listen to a few. If not, think about the evidence that you can come up with that would indicate a shift in our perceptions and reality that are apparent to you. New soul, maybe as humans are starting to get it. W.H.T.E. Lotus 1, oh my. In my own experience. Carla, yes? Mosley 288, I like the comment about becoming our own authorization. W.H.T.E. Lotus 1, I experienced first a blue tube of light then a white tube of light and then golden. Each with their own level of awareness when I wrote a paper about it in 1988 someone responded to it with a sharing of Sri Aurobindo. Carla, sorry to interrupt, but please remember the protocol for turns and commenting. Mosley 288, whoops. WHTE Lotus 1, and according to Sri. The colors each represent ascending levels of awareness the blue is higher mind. According to Sri the white is universal overmind and the golden supramental consciousness. Carla, I'll call on you next, Bob, after responding to White Lotus. I am familiar with your descriptions of the colors and the relation to awareness but can you relate your comment directly to something in the quotes? WHTE Lotus 1, well. It only skimmed over them yesterday. Carla, how does this relate to self-authorization, for instance? WHTE Lotus 1, have to think about that specific question. Carla, OK. Let us know if you want to add anything later, Bob. Mosley 288, no comment. You answered it. Carla, OK. There are enough of us here to start the session. Hello to all the recent arrivals and I want to thank you for your excellent comments in the folder so far. The quote I posted for this session deals with the spiritual aspect of the hypothetical human transformation we may be experiencing, and for tonight let's try to stick to just that aspect of our overall topic, please. It's tempting to get into other things, I know but that's what the folder and the final session will do, Ock. So, who wants to start with responses or comments on this, what evidence can you offer in support of a spiritual aspect of the transformation? John. John Will, the quotes were right on for me, the higher one's consciousness becomes, the more one realizes that divinity or self-authorization comes from within. We are not separate from universal consciousness, we are manifestations of it, one with it. This is my own personal experience, and evidence enough for me that the transformation, is spiritual. Carla, all right. Do you see this in evidence around us in society in any specific way? John Will, yes. I see it in how people's attitudes and beliefs seems to be reflected in their personal circumstances. More and more new groups also seem to take this point of view. Carla, good point. Linda. New soul, first, I'd like to say that Rio Rita's posts were excellent concerning social spiritual transformation. There is tons of evidence. For example, I found it astonishing and wonderful that the Celestine Prophecy has been on the bestseller lists for over a year. And, there are many books that everyone is reading on NDEs and the spiritual messages inherent in this experience. Plus, Mac's book is now mainstream, as well as Mutant Message and dozens more. People want this. Carla, yes, there's lots of literature that is relevant and popular. White Lotus, 
can you summarize the thrust or message of this movement? WHTE Lotus 1, which movement specifically? Carla, or just make your original comment? WHTE Lotus 1, pass. Carla, wait. New soul, I think that if people are reading this, they are trying, wanting to spiritually transform themselves. Carla, I should have said the movement to seek info about the metaphysical. So if you'd like to comment, please go ahead. New soul, I agree with John Will, that this is an inherently personal thing, that once you have it, you must evolve. Sorry I had to get that in. Carla, Tony. WHTE Lotus 1, seeking info about the metaphysical comes from the insufficient answers found in other areas such as religion. Tony Tree, do you think this new awareness is, in part, responsible for our awareness of the abductions and could in some way the abductions be a corrective measure to stop the evolution of our spiritual selves? Carla, yes, I think this could be a responsible factor, and that the abductors could be changing tactics in order to massively adjust the population. Given the nature of many abductee accounts if we are indeed advancing spiritually, I hope that part of the change would include our having new perceptions of subtle energies and some hard science experiments recently have documented the effects of alien presence on the environmental energy field, Bob. I'd love to know what Carla based that last remark on. It's an intriguing comment. Ed. J.V. Mosley 288, is there any evidence that abductees become any more self-sufficient or is it less? Carla. Do you mean financially and materially? Mosley 288, I mean more self-authorized. Carla, it varies from person to person, of course but in many instances there is a flowering of the individual in a number of ways, and for those abductees their response is one of determination and growth, not always in the same directions, however. UFOLL, OK. I was just wondering how many of you think that you may have been abducted? Carla. The question is ok, but the timing is off. UFOLL, sorry. Carla, we're discussing a specific topic for now, and if you really are interested in those who feel they've been abducted, I'd suggest posting a message in the Electronic Cafe, D. D777, I have seen more people study the metaphysical first, than found alien second. Carla, do you mean they were drawn to metaphysical subjects and subsequently discovered an alien activity in their lives? D777, yes. Studying metaphysics bade them more awareness, than bent to see a connection of sorts between what they were studying and the activities of the aliens. Carla, okay, but have you thought about another possibility that the subliminal knowledge of their experiences might have compelled them to the study of metaphysics in an effort to understand such events? D777, that is entirely possible. It's like asking, who came first, the chicken or the egg? Carla, true, but we should remember that our society gives us a limited perspective within which we can contemplate and answer such mysteries since the prevalent religious atmosphere does have specific statements on some things and is silent about others. Linda. Carla, let's go to White Lotus, then. WHTE Lotus 1. The words self-authorized threw me a bit earlier, but if I understand the meaning then I would say that within my own experience. The white light was not self-authorized and the golden light was. Carla, did you feel that after experiencing the golden light that you had a new perspective and a new sense of inner understanding that would allow you to make internal decisions in a different way? WHTE Lotus 1, yes, in part but it wasn't until a Tibetan Rinpoche and a Cherokee chieftainess further explained the light, that I had a greater recognition of what it was. Carla, so in those people you found an external authorization first? WHTE Lotus 1, perhaps a bit and I don't know how to explain that I felt authorized, but without full understanding and there is a difference. Carla, okay. I think Bob is next, so please. Mosley 288. In NDEs there are almost always spiritual advancements, almost 100%, but not in abductions? Or am I mistaken? Carla, no, you're not mistaken. In some cases it seems the trauma is so great that the person's integrity is shattered often resulting in degenerative behavior, that is drugs, 
alcohol, promiscuity, etc. But by and large I see that abductees cope pretty well and they can't help but become aware of a different sort of spiritual or metaphysical, which may be a more accurate term, aspect to their existence. Do you want to add more, Bob? Mosley 288, yes, I am having a little trouble getting from a typical abduction scene to a metaphysical advancement. Mosley 288, N.O. Carla, OK yes, the fear and trauma of the typical abduction scene usually takes a toll and takes time to get over but a healthy individual usually tries to get past the fear since it is inhibitory to positive actions and when a person realizes that guns and cameras and security systems won't work against alien intrusions, the usual next thought is of some inner means of protection and resistance and the inner world is a part of what we've come to think of as metaphysical so perhaps you can see my point of reference here. Any comment? D777, Rio Rito 88 is next. Mosley 288, I want to listen more about this. Rio Rito 88, WHTE Lotus you are so fortunate to experience golden light, as you know the most sublime. Carla, I want Bob to have a chance to finish, and then John is next, according to my list, John. Mosley 288, no I'm fine thank you. Carla, John. John Well, I became interested in UFOs first, then discovered it bled over into metaphysics. I find I can no longer separate the two and my awareness of the phenom has actually expanded my consciousness and sense that I am more than I appear. Carla, just asking could this in part have come from the knowledge that our current science is unable to deal with the phenom and that it transcends into an area we could call the paraphysical? implying that there are natural laws and energies at work but that we haven't yet mastered the power to recognize and affect them? John Will, yes, absolutely. Science and spirituality are actually different ends of the same stick. Carla, OK. Rio Rita. Rio Rita 88, of Colored Light. Also healing influences are in it in me what you are now discussing sorry my comment is too far back I know of a method to stop an abduction. Carla, is there more? Rio Rito 88, they are deterred by some cry such as Jesus save me it has worked and if you think why it means the greys are anti-Jesus or well all they are now saying about them. Carla, sorry, but not in all cases. I investigated an abduction in which the grandmother prayed to Jesus for help and then a blonde-haired Jesus beamed into the room and said, in effect, that the greys were working for him. The abduction proceeded without interruption. All methods I've heard of for stopping abductions have proven inconsistent in their effectiveness, Rita, for your reply. Rio Rito 88, oh that is an awful story. Those little guys screen us all the time causing illusions. Carla, yes, I know they do. Tony, please. Tony Tree, is this a good time for you to elaborate on the hard scientific experiments you mentioned earlier? Carla. I can relate that a controlled experiment involved compasses which registered any electromagnetic field fluctuation, and during reported abductions the compasses did record some inexplicable fluctuations. That's off the subject, though so let's get back to the spiritual evidence and its relationship to our awareness of the abduction phenom. Linda, you're next, so. Ed note, Carla fails to mention by, who all, when this experiment was conducted. JV. New Soul, it's my belief, and posted in folder more depth, that often it is serious emotional physical trauma including abductions, heartbreaks, deaths of loved ones, illnesses, catastrophes, etc. And when we get a chance to begin reflecting on the why in a deeper way, we move to a spiritual understanding and evolvement. That for me is the connection between abduction, etc. and growth. Carla. I completely agree about the effects of trauma. But perhaps it's not so much the, why but a question of, what do we do now? The, why always seems ineffable, no matter what spiritual path one follows yet we must continue to live with whatever situation presents itself and it is in the way we choose to respond to all situations, especially adversity that our spiritual strength is important. UFO 11, you're next. New soul, exactly. You're right. I should have said after the, why me? There's the what do I do now, to what I was saying, up there feel better. Some will eat too much, 
or self-destruct. But others choose the higher road. Rio Rito 88, tough life experiences just means that good old karma is kicking back at ya. Nothing more. UFOLL, because Kodak has been making computers using thought projection, instead of keyboards supposedly like the ETs do it. Carla, why don't you post info on this in the cafe? We'd all be interested. D, you're next. UFOLL, OK. D777, I was going to reply to Rita about stopping the abductions, however, I don't have all the information at hand to help at this time. Perhaps I'll know more next time. Carla, thanks. Bob. Mosley 288, I don't know about stopping the abductions, but I believe you can stop the fear by asking. Carla, by asking what? Mosley 288, asking that they do something to relieve the fear in an abduction scenario. Carla, I see and sometimes this has helped, I agree, but not always. White Lotus, one last comment? Our time is almost over. WHTE Lotus 1, are you asking what might be forms of evidence of spiritual? Or asking for reportings of already determined forms of evidence? Carla, I was questioning the evidence we can marshal to promote the idea of a spiritual awakening generating through society. For the next class, we will look at the biological implications, for instance, as there are several aspects to the transformation question. Carla, yes, I know. But there should be time for a reply, White Lotus. WHTE Lotus 1, well. Knowing that is the question, it would require some thought. Carla, okay. Rio. Rio Rito 88, native emotions like fear will stifle or just close off telepathic ability. With the visitors. Now evidence of awakening is in bookstores in abundance wonderful insightful fantastic new books out these days. Not till now. Carla, but do we want telepathic connections with them? This question must be answered first. Agilson. Agilson 432, what about angels good and bad throughout the ages? Don't the bad always bring the good? Carla, in the sense of a balance of opposites? Does one really bring the other? or is there a coexistence? Agilson 432, I guess I am saying the greys may bring good info we don't understand. Carla, that's possible, something worth discussing in its own right. John, please and let this be the closing comment after which I'll say a bit about the folder. John. John Will, what we do now is become more conscious of the choices we make and observe the results based on our thoughts beliefs. Adjust those, and we change our consciousness. Carla, yes, and in some cases we adjust our thoughts in a specifically spiritual manner? John Will, yes, but also in everyday life. Carla, I think the evidence in general society does show a wide interest in paraphysical matters which do affect our everyday lives, certainly and when it comes to interactions with the aliens, we often find two different spiritual components one which aligns the abductee with the abductors and one which positions them as opposites but with the abductee calling up new spiritual insights and ideas as a means of response for his her own sake. Our next class will focus on the biological aspects of species transformation and I'll list a few new quotes for a starting point. So far, I'm very pleased with the ideas several of you have contributed to the folder and I'd like to see responses from each of you before the next session. Till then, I'll check and frequently to make my own responses. This has been an excellent session, and I hope you've enjoyed the exchanges as much as I have. Carla, I found it hard to tear myself away from the TV news especially earlier, when announcements about FEMA's deployment were made. Violet for you, fine evening. UFOLL, does anyone think it's connected with the World Trade Center? Violet for you, Iranian, but we'll wait to hear more news. For Kent, hi, sorry I missed last week due to kids and spring break. Carla, glad you're here tonight, anyway. Iskna Michael, greetings, all. Jess stepped up momentarily to start a log. Hi, Carla. Carla, okay. First, though, Let's wait maybe two more minutes for anyone else to arrive. And I want to thank those of you who responded to the material in the folder. Course TA, 
I think we're all kind of stressed out today because of Oklahoma City. Carla, yes, I agree. John Well, evening, Carla A.L. Carla, this type of scenario is much too familiar and as such echoes in many of the fringe rumors we have to live with in this field. Back to the folder, if I may. Has there been much chat about this event in any of our postings? Iskna Michael, sorry, Carla, not sure I understand your question. Carla, never mind, then. For Kent, in my book the biggest news is the lack of news about Mexico sightings. Carla, I was thinking of your recent class topic, Michael, about GOVT issues. BTW, we rain under a storm tornado watch in this area and I could disappear at any moment. Carla, it's time to begin things now. Iskna Michael, Carla, if you suddenly go offline, we'll try to hold the fort, but please come back soon so we know you weren't blown away in a tornado. Carla, okay. On with the show. If there are some changes occurring that affect our perceptions both externally and internally what mental or brain functions do you think might be involved and or changed too? Any responses? Carla, yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, any work done on possible hypothalamus effects? Carla, not that I'm aware of, but the subject was also raised in our folder. I had hoped that you might know more about funding and research projects. Carla, can you explain about these effects, Michael? Iskna Michael, obviously, the whole endocrine system remains largely mysterious to medical science and could be hugely implicated in the internal and external effects you mentioned but no, I myself have no knowledge, and wonder who does. There are so many fruitful avenues of possible research that have never been tried. Carla, I agree. What specific effects could be involved with that system? Iskna Michael, are you asking me to speculate? Carla, if you know more, please fill us in. Iskna Michael, hormones change consciousness. That is easily demonstrated. Neurotransmitters interact with hormones to produce prodigious effects of evidently paranormal abilities and it is not hard to imagine that an advanced race of beings would understand relatively simple and straightforward ways of manipulating the production of neurotransmitters etc. But this is just a guess. Carla, great. Thanks. Carla, and the abductors do often make vague references to changing enzymes or energies or blood etc. so that it should be something testable in medical terms. White Lotus WHTE Lotus 1, with the shift in perspective, there is a raising of energy from the medulla to the third eye and crown areas of the head mind. Carla, what parts of the brain are involved in this, do you know? Also, what sort of energy is raised? WHTE Lotus 1, well, the pineal esoteric little thing that it is. Grin and the energy would involve the Kundalini. Carla, okay, thanks, although I admit to knowing very little about Kundalini explanations. Tony, I think you're next. Tony Tree, how about our perceptions of the aliens as being here for our good? Slash screen memories law. How can we trust anything reported in these encounters considering this ability to alter our perceptions in these scenarios? Ed note, take a very careful mental note of Carla's next response, it's a vitally important piece of information. Something we should always bear in mind in our own personal investigations. Carla, a tough question. I don't think we can trust much of the reported info to be honest without some method of external observation and thorough investigation. But we can look at certain data that supports the idea of technological intrusions into the brains of abductees and look at what these affected areas are doing, in terms of overall brain function. For instance, the brain stem really has more control over brain activity than the medulla or the cerebral cortex and some of the abduction data points clearly to implants in this area. I'll say more about this in a moment, but Kent, I think you also have a comment. For Kent, I'm not sure of physiological definitions but, external energy, quickening, sources seems to transform the whole body into a thinking perceiving mechanism with synesthesia and a kind of whole perception. Carla, please relate this to the abduction experience and all the transformation theory. For Kent, 
I think these two experiences might be connected. Carla, how? For Kent, okay. When stimulated I think one begins to move through doors such doors reveal entities of different levels. Thus an abduction may be nothing more than an entry. Carla, an entry of the entities? Or the abductee's entry into something else? For Kent, the human enters their space or becomes capable thereof. Carla, yes, Violet. Violet for you, how would the back of the head be stimulated? Carla, more, Violet. Violet for you, I wish I knew. Carla, I meant, was there more to your comment? I didn't see it at the end. Carla, if you're asking about the stimulation of the back of the head. Violet for you, in prayer the back of my head becomes stimulated wanted answers in the abduction. Carla, were you referring to my comments on implants or to Kent's remarks? Violet for you, experience. Carla, please explain. Violet for you, implants yes. Carla, okay. Tony, I'll get to you next. Violet for you, it becomes warm and I get a surge in my cells the only way I can explain it. Carla, the brain stem controls almost everything our state of consciousness, waking sleeping levels our attention to all sensory input our interpretation of sensory input and our motor functions. We know from human medical experiments that the external stimulation, as Kent noted, of certain brain areas can cause virtual reality events and experiences, not only in a human brain, by the way but apparently similar effects are seen when brain areas are stimulated in monkeys and apes. Tony. Tony Tree, we seem to be talking about hard facts, how can we get this brain stimulation activity sort of on the agenda for our scientific community to look at? Carla, Ain, I've asked this same question repeatedly. And now that some monies have been promised for research, this would certainly be a worthwhile area of investigation. Kent. For Kent, there might be more to this energy phenomenon. Another thing, the entity, Earth, seems to be quickening too, increase in base frequency which is measurable at last. This might account for the appearance of the ultra-terrestrials because the whole planet begins to resonate at a doorway threshold. Carla, maybe that is similar to what I've called a wobble effect in both the planet and the population. Michael. Iskna Michael, the physician in Toronto who's studying effects of temporal lobe stimulation, forget his name, gets such strong out-of-body effects etc. that he's claiming such stimulation might account for all perceived experiences of abduction. No aliens. Just stimulated lobes. Michael is referring to Persinger's work with the electrical stimulation of certain brain centers via the use of a helmet he had designed for the purpose. His experiments and findings have been hotly debated ever since. Carla, would that it were true. However, so far it hasn't proven to fit all the known reports, so don't get too hopeful about that theory, or about the allergy to electricity theory either. Tony. Tony Tree, but could the electrical discharges of geo-force cause enough brain activity? Carla, that's the debated point. It's more theory than evidence right now, though. Yes, Slav. Slav OM, if memory serves, think I read that Persinger's methodology was called into question? Carla, I'm not sure about the methodology but the parameters were highly hypothetical and I recall a number of dissimilarities with many abduction experiences. Any other comments questions at this point? Carla, yes, Michael. Iskna Michael, the Learning Channel did a program on abduction a few nights ago in which a British woman, very smart and not much committed to the alien part of abduction went to see Persinger, got into his experiment room, had weird experiences, all shown on TV, came away saying that, while very interesting. It didn't seem likely to do away with the strangeness of abduction. Carla, thanks. If anyone has an available tape of that program, I'd really like to see it. Let me know. Tony. Tony Tree, I think his theories, for singers, could explain some lights in the sky. But that's about it. Carla, maybe a few other things too, but certainly not the physical after effects that crop up so often in abduction scenarios. 
and of course it doesn't explain the peripheral activity such as crop circles and animal mutilations. Yes, UFO 11. UFO LL, someone spoke about the neocortex, is that the outer layer of the brain? Carla, it is a rather recent development, I believe although my knowledge of brain structure is admittedly limited. Why do you ask? More, UFO 11? UFO LL, I was reading about it. And I was wondering what I was reading about. Carla, okay. When we consider the fact that all of our perceptions must be processed by a physical structure like the brain then even our most spiritual experiences are also similarly processed. So there must certainly be a question about any intrusions into the part of the brain that does the processing, wouldn't you think? Carla, yes, Slav? Slavo M, I'm not sure processing of perceptions and spiritual experience are the same. Carla, but doesn't every experience have to be processed in order to be perceived? Slivo M, sure, but are spiritual experiences processed in same manner? Carla, that's my point if it is an experience, it is to have an entry into our perceptive field and the brain is, so far as we know, the only processor. Comment. Slivo M, are we talking about experience as external or internal? Carla, either. Slivo M, but source could be different, right? Carla, sure. Slivo M, then processing might be different. Carla, I'm not talking about the source, only about the processing of the data coming from the event either internally or externally. And there are those, both in psychology and physics, who would tell us that the separation of internal and external events is illusory, anyway. Yes, White Lotus. WHTE Lotus 1. Are you using the word process in regards to conceptual thought? Carla, in regards to all assimilation of stimulation, whether external physical or internal slash psychological slash spiritual. We lost White Lotus, so Kent, please. For Kent, about these realities. The problem with investigating these expanded realities is that after a certain physical bound threshold the investigator can no longer take the notions or proof and explanation along with. In fact, upon the return the brain grasps for straws and imposes screens which filter the limited picture. Carla, perhaps the brain is imposing the screens but the other possibility is that the screens are externally manipulated and imposed, which I would venture may be closer to what is actually occurring. Anything further, Kent? For Kent, no. Carla, okay. To bring us to a point of closure, Let's look at a couple of things. First, the history of human consciousness is one of continued evolution with some strong evidence for a noticeable change having occurred within historical time, perhaps as recently as 5,000 years ago and all of the related fields of study agree that such evolution surely continues today. So the idea that we might be the specific generation, s, to feel the impact of another noticeable shift in perception is not out of the question. And as always, with a question of such magnitude we can't afford to examine all the possibilities to explain and understand it, including any evidence of external stimulation. For the final class, let's try to forge an overview of these possibilities especially to consider what effects, if any, the millennial situation may have on our sense of some transformative activity. Any final questions or comments? Carla, yes, Slav. Slav O.M. What do you mean by evolution of consciousness? And shift in perception? Carla, okay, for instance, our historical records provide evidence that within the past 5,000 years the human species developed the ability to perceive and process the concept of certain colors that had not been hitherto available to us. And for the most part there has been a noticeable shift as well in the species' response to its environment, which has to have become the dominant perception in order for our overall misuse of the planet's bounty to have occurred. Yes, Tony? Tony Tree, yes, a comment slash why is it the more I learn about this pen? The less I actually know? It just keeps changing. Carla, one possibility, the main burden of our education right now is in unlearning so many of the givens we have accepted but which now don't serve to explain the realities that have shifted beneath and around us. Tony? Tony Tree, yeah, 
but could my confusion about the fen be how shall I say anticipated? Carla, you may be right. Final discussion postings will be available in the folder by Sunday evening and I really hope that more of you will jump into the conversation. Thanks to our TA this evening, for taking care of business and thanks to you all for coming together and trying to get at the big questions. If there is nothing further, let's call it a night. Course TA, thanks Carla for a great discussion. WHTE Lotus 1, thank you. Carla, you're very welcome. Violet for you, must learn to adapt to changing shifts, thanks and a smile. For Kent, thanks much. UFOLL, see you Carla, goodbye. Tony Tree, thank you Carla. Agilson 432, thank you. Carla, I agree completely. Things aren't going to be the same, ain, it seems. Bye, all. Slivo M, good night and good show. Goodbye. For Kent, goodbye. Course TA, that was a great discussion. I wanted to comment on several things, but as TA, can't do so very well. Good night, Mike. You'll be hearing from me soon, ain. Bye. Iskna Mike L, had to step out for a while, but got a log so we'll reread everything. Carla, and this will be my first time to speak at the on conference, so I'm really excited. Wolf Lady, Carla what about NY City? Carla, hey, TA. Glad to have you back with us. BTW, who are you this evening? I don't have any plans right now for NYC. Course TA, I'm D777. I'm sitting in for Jim who is babysitting at home this evening. Carla, although I did speak there a couple of years ago and met many intriguing folks in ufology out there. Thanks, D, for taking care of the business tonight. It's already a few minutes after time for class to start, and since this is our last session I want to relax the agenda a bit and give each member a chance to make a statement about the phenomenon of species transformation, but, I will ask that each of you do your best to be concise, specific and to avoid delving into the strictly personal events you've experienced unless they relate directly to our topic, and, to avoid restating anything you've already posted in detail in our folder. If there is some change or transformation occurring, as many of us have come to feel then surely we can delineate some of the real evidence that leads us to these ideas and the specifics can then be discussed by all of us. So, if you're willing to go along with this, let's give it a shot. Since I was late getting logged on, however, I don't have a complete list of the present members. John Will, I'd like to propose a notion for evidence of transformation that might at first seem a bit unusual, and that is this radical reactionary swing back to conservatism and fundamentalism. Now occurring in America. Seems to me like a fear reaction to change. Carla, a good starting point. Mosley 288, of course it is and that's all it is. Carla, I think we're all aware of this reactionary movement in many areas but is this the first time we've seen such a thing in the history we possess? In other words, how does such a swing indicate a transformation? Carla, John, do you want to respond first? John Will, to me it seems a knee-jerk reaction to changing views. Carla, possibly, but if so, this certainly isn't a new response in human history, is it? John Will, not at all. But history also shows that there's an adverse reaction to any new concept for example, discovering that the world is not the center of the universe, that man is capable of space travel, etc. There is always negative outcry first before it's proven true. Carla, I would agree with this idea, and I think a few of your classmates want to comment. Kent. I think you are first in line, so please. For Kent, will it's intellectualism that's gonna go bye-bye, experience is all there is. Carla, Kent, please use the protocol so we'll know when you're finished, Ock. Your reply begs the question, I believe can you be more specific so we can follow your ideas? For Kent, there is no such a thing as empirical proof. Carla, of what? For Kent, of a reason and fact. Intuition dawns now. Carla, I don't agree with that. I do think we have rational faculties that are responsible for all our perceptions, and the presence of our perceptions is certainly proof that they, 
at least, exist. Is this what you meant by experience is everything? For Kent, the rational is only binary, the ability to argue. Carla, Tony, you're next, so please. Tony Tree, okay. Not to sound Celestin, but I have many, many incredible synchronicities happening. I don't know what they mean but I feel that they are changing my awareness of things and one of these is the realization of the alien presence. Carla, for those who may not know what synchronicity means, it's a term coined by Jung to identify coincidences of events that should not have any objective correlation but which do prove to show behind-the-scenes correspondence. For instance, a woman goes shopping and decides for no apparent reason to buy a black dress and three days later a family member dies and the woman needs the black dress for the funeral. In terms of the alien abduction presence, I know from personal experiences too, that several synchronistic events have come to light as we delved into our alien-related events some of them stretching back many years, as if some bigger, unseen plan has been at work all along and has only recently come to fruition in the correspondence of certain events. Perhaps one of the signs of change may indeed be the expanding number of synchronistic events many, many abductees experience, as you've said. Bob, I think you are next, so you can either make your own statement or reply to what has already been said. Mosley 288, well I certainly don't think rational thinking is going anywhere but up. And synchronicity is just the way the universe works and focusing is the way to be aware of it. But about transformation you were saying a few sessions ago about your wishful thinking about it may I mention mine? I think the physical body is going to be transformed by genetic manipulation to be less deceased and to live much longer, and with the improved body along will follow naturally an improvement of the consciousness. Carla, it's my feeling too, that if this transformation is occurring, we surely wouldn't lose the advantages we've already acquired as part of our species survival such as our intellectual capacities, but that it would remain intact and would indeed expand along with the other faculties, that is intuition, telepathy, perhaps increased psychokinetics, etc. And if our mentality changes increases, then I would think our physical form would also reflect such changes, as you've indicated. UFO 11, you're next and may either comment on the foregoing or add your own statement. UFO LL, I was thinking about what John said, Backslash. Carla, and? UFOLL, whatever happened to the people when Jesus came? Carla, are you still there, UFO 11? I don't understand your question. Can you be specific? Which people, for example? UFOLL, they knew he was coming and some still didnt believe. Carla, okay, I get your question now, but I don't see how it relates to our discussion. UFOLL, new things, changes. Carla, oh, okay, but still I'm confused about your thoughts here. Maybe we can discuss this later? White Lotus, you're next on the list, so. WHTE Lotus 1, Nada. Carla, okay, Kent. UFOLL, we know it's coming but some still don't believe. UFOLL, you, sorry. Carla, Kent, please. For Kent, what we might be talking about is a spiritualization which may be the abandonment of the physical which was never primary anyway. Carla, may I argue this? If the physical was never primary, why does it exist? For Kent, a long time ago we fell into protoplasm. Carla, so, doesn't protoplasm exist? And how do you know we fell? Couldn't it be that God however we may think of the concept? deliberately chose to work through the physical? If so, then it certainly has a great and primary importance if not, then God made a big mistake. Which is it? For Kent, the physical is an illusion. Carla, prove it. For Kent, there ain't no such thing as a proof that will hold up. Carla, just trying to stretch a point. Bob, I think you want to comment next, so. Mosley 288 could we be getting a question here about the messianic reappearance? And this is a good question I think UFO, but should we anticipate an individual to appear as perhaps predicted that will embody the aspects of this transformation as perhaps Jesus did for the change that occurred in his time? Carla, 
Such predictions and rumors have abounded for a while now with certain individuals having been identified, their place and time of birth, etc. But in many of these cases, the predictions have pointed to not Christ but Antichrist and of course, if such a thing is coming, we won't know until afterward. I might add that in quite a few abduction events a figure identifying itself as Jesus has shown up and interacted with abductees sometimes by imparting spiritual statements, but not always. In one case I've investigated, in fact, the abductee consciously remembered seeing backslash Jesus on the cross, and then Jesus got off the cross and came to the man and kissed him. The man was in an awe-stricken state for several days afterwards but when he investigated this event under regressive hypnosis the image of Jesus vanished and what he saw then was a typical reptoid, who didn't kiss him but raped him instead. In another case, Jesus came into the abductee's room with a number of greys and told the abductee that the greys worked for him and that they were his angels. The catch in THS case was that Jesus was blonde and blue-eyed, which of course isn't consistent with what we know of the historical figure. Bob, please. Mosley 288, let me bow out except to say, Kent, material may be an illusion but it is too often so appealing. Carla, D, you're next. Course TA, I don't see the transformation as being recent at all, but the next step in many steps taken by mankind throughout his history. In each generation, mankind was forced to do more. To survive. To move onward to invent things then to think more about God, to create things for his environment. To forge outward. To move into new countries. To cross the oceans. And each generation there would be the exception that would stand out from the crowd such as Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, artists, inventors, great saints always society moving outward then we crossed the ocean and gradually filled up the land. At the same time, our brains were developing. Evolution if you, will, the fittest always creating the next generation. Then we filled up the land. Women were forced to take a greater role more was expected of everyone, and humans brains continue to increase in intellect, and as well in wondering the whys of things. Then when the land was filled almost to capacity, and the land bent to deteriorate mankind is looking for a way to survive. Mankind then looks outward. Into outer space. And into inner space. Thus the seeming transformation. Carla, and this is indeed the evolutionary course we've seen so far. I think the crucial point here involves two things. First, the impetus for change and second the fact that our transformation is not the first we've experienced and I didn't mean to imply that it was so we need perhaps to think about what the impetus this time may be, if there is a specific cause, or if this is just the way evolution has always worked and will continue. Wolf Lady we haven't heard from you tonight, and I would very much like to. Any comments? Wolf Lady, yes. Wolf Lady, my belief is that we have for thousands of years coexist with other beings on this planet. I am not sure what the full purpose is but I do know that more and more people are becoming awakened to beliefs that we are not alone. Carla, when it comes to matters of belief, we don't require external evidence, I understand but when it comes to matters of knowledge, surely we must be able to identify the reasons for the things we think we are learning, would you agree? Wolf Lady, yes. Carla, UFO 11, your comment? UFO LL, af Carla, is that the comment? UFO LL, Mary was pregnant like many abductees were, Jesus was missing between 12 and 33. Carla, not necessarily. UFO LL, and he had many of the same powers that ETs do, he rose FFROM the dead and ascended into what they say is heaven. So did Mary. What do you think of it? Carla, if one accepts the Bible as absolutely true, that is the case, but the Bible hasn't been verified to universal acceptance and that's a matter for a completely different discussion. Kent, your comments? For Kent, in the book of Brahman Preman is identified by the ancients as the firstborn so perhaps we can better understand both our origins and also the return. Carla, a comment quickly for UFO 11, then I'll respond. Some aliens have claimed to have manufactured Jesus as an instrument for exerting social controls. UFOLL, heard that once. Carla, 
but of course we know that the aliens have often lied in their statements. UFOLL, or twice. Carla, now, Kent, you've brought up a remarkably close to home point. I will post a longer message in the folder, concerning a VR event I was shown a couple of years ago, referring to exactly this scenario. Hope you'll have a look at it tomorrow. Our time has run out a few minutes ago, so we'll close the session for tonight, but I will continue to use the folder for the next week and I hope we can all get our ideas spelled out more clearly there. I don't know when my next class will be scheduled as I'm about to be doing a lot of travel, but ISCNI will let you know when the next class will begin. Please don't forget the folder, Angie, and thanks very very much for all you've contributed. See you in the folder. Bye for now. Tony Tree, thank you Carla. Course TA, thanks Carla for an excellent discussion. Wolf Lady, goodbye Carla thanks. For Kent, thanks Carla. UFOLL, thanks Carla. Bye. Mosley288, thanks Carla, enjoyed the class and look forward to the next and someday meeting you. Carla, I would love to meet you all face to face. Let's hope it can happen. Maybe the ISCNI should plan a reunion or some conference? UFOLL, cool. Carla, if you like the idea, let's pass it along to Michael. Bye, all. The end thank you for listening.